Hello everyone, welcome to Hacker Simulator. Now, I have been looking at uh, hacking simulators or hacking inspired games for, for a while now um, and uh, came across this one and um, seems to be a fully 3D experience. I'm really looking forward to this one. We have released October 20th, 2021, developed by Save All Studio, published by Playway SA, Baked Games SA. Become a hacker and build your online reputation to the top by discovering simplified and enjoyable versions of real-life hacking methods. Complete contracts, buy new programs, up upgrade your computer, crack Wi-Fi networks, and infiltrate people's or companies' online systems. And uh, later on, we do have a description here that says, important note, please note that Hacker Simulator is not a realistic one-for-one -one hacking simulation and that the mechanics are only inspired by real-life hacking methods. With Hacker Simulator, I wanted to bring a fun and immersive experience on the theme of hacking so that you can have a better vision of some of its aspects. Being alone, I certainly can't cover all of them. In order to keep the business running, you need to stay anonymous regularly by hiding behind various Wi-Fi networks. To do this, you will learn how to use the famous suite of tools called Aircrack NG, which is an actual utility. Um, so this is going to be, uh, the reviews are somewhat mixed on this. Overall, very positive, it seems. I'm not going to dig into those because I don't want to taint my own um, perception of the game. Um, but it sounds like um, we have... Um, some mechanics that may be similar to similar to Welcome to the Game and Welcome to the Game 2, which I did not purchase, and I did a video on that, so um, you can watch it if you want my, my commentary on it, but I did not actually buy it or play it. But from the previews, it looks like a pretty good one, so let's give it a shot. <laughs> Good intro. Throbbing techno music, police siren. I feel like a hacker already. The computer will be your main tool during your hacker journey. You can interact with it by pressing F. Uh, you can open these tutorial pop-ups at any time by entering the help submenu from the escape pause menu. Okay, you have to close. It is a 3D game. That, I can move around and everything. Interact with the computer. Well, before we do that, let's have a look, shall we? Can I interact with the TV? I cannot. Can't sit down. There's a remote control. Some iron. Uh, we have a mysterious red hologram. Locked. Okay. I got a closet full of junk with a poster in it for some reason. Uh, looks like the computer is all we got, so let's do that, I guess. Oh, I got another mysterious red hologram. Unlocked with rest scatter. Okay, whatever that is. Um, okay, use the computer. Incoming call. How long have you been sleeping? I've been trying to call you for at least two hours. Anyway, let's get to work. All right, the first thing you're going to need is a new Wi-Fi network. And to get one, you will need to crack one. Okay. I'll call you back when you're done. Okay. Open the browser software. Hint, you could open software from the shortcut bar on the left-hand side of the screen. Well, why would I want to open up a browser? I have... Hey, it's me, your Wi-Fi. You pay now. Password is required. Okay. I am already connected to that one, so... Okay. Browser. Uh, we have a simulacrum of sorts of the Tor browser. Okay. This is the Backstore website. Okay. All the tools that you will need to be on... All the tools that you will need will be on the Backstore website. Make sure to visit it regularly, okay? All right. 
Um, so in order to do this, what we would normally do is use these utilities, AirPlay, AeroDump, and AirCrack, which we would use to uh, find hidden wireless networks, uh, to um, uh, intercept and parse the traffic, and then to attempt to uh, crack the key. So, uh, but we wouldn't go to backstore, whatever this dot tour is. Oh, I see the tour analog is tour. Um, these are just, they're not illegal to have. You can, you can just get them. Um, but okay. All right. The, uh, three tools are required to crack Wi-Fi networks. AeroDump lists nearby Wi-Fi networks details such as BSSID. Yes, that's what I said. AirPlay to send deauthentication packets to capture the handshake key. Yes, uh, as I just said. And then AirCrack to crack the handshake key to obtain the password. Yes, as I just said. So all of that is accurate. And I'm looking at the uh, the uh, preview here, this image, uh, and that is uh, that's it. That's that's what it actually looks like. Uh, more or less. Staying connected to the same Wi-Fi network too long will result in a police arrest leading to a loss of reputation. You can check next to the Wi-Fi icon the detection level of the Wi-Fi network you are connected to. Note that this detection will only be active at reputation level 2. Okay. I don't know how we have a detection level. How, how, how are we able to gauge? So, okay. First things first. All right. So, what we're doing is we want to break into other people's Wi-Fi networks so that any of the activity um, that we conduct on the network will be attributed to the owner of that network rather than leading directly back to us. That said, um, while this is one, w one way of having a layer of abstraction between our activity and you know ourselves, our actual identity, it's not really going to do that much. Um, I mean, we'll be able to see if a forensic uh, network analyst comes in, they'll be able to see the device connected, they'll be able to see the MAC address, they'll be able to get all of that information, um, and it'll perhaps be even easier to get it because if they go to just some random person's house and we happen to be using their Wi-Fi, of course they're going to comply unless they themselves also, you know, have a problem with authority or are attempting to hide something else. Um, so, um, you know, this is not necessarily a way it's just a layer of abstraction it's not a very good anonymizing technique but sure i mean i i can buy it um i can certainly accept it <clears throat> um usually when you crack a wi-fi network it's less to hide your identity and more simply so that you can get access for free you know you want internet access and so you want it for free so you crack other people's wi-fi networks so that you can get access to the internet that way uh, but you should know that when you do that you're you know basically opening yourself up all of your traffic is going to have to go through their infrastructure their access point and router and their connection out to the internet so um you're kind of opening yourself up if you crack the wrong network to eavesdropping in that fashion so keep that in mind too um, how we are able to uh, do this, uh, say that it says that there's a detection level, apparently if we say connected to a Wi-Fi network too long, then the police will be able to track us down. Um, I mean, the police don't have some magic device or ability to monitor all traffic on all Wi-Fi networks. It's not as, I mean, if you do things that are illegal, you'll be investigated and you'll be found out, but um, whether we're connected to one Wi-Fi network or, or another, it doesn't really do much as far as anonymizing us uh, at the end of the day. So, uh, moving on. Uh, note that Wi-Fi networks of higher security will allow you to stay connected for a longer time. Again, for some reason. Okay, open the terminal software. Hint, you can open up multiple terminals uh, instances if needed. Well, that's good. Most of your work will be done using tools. To use those tools, you'll need to be on your computer and you will be able to use them in the terminal. I, I don't know why I'm having trouble reading this. It, it's proper syntax and grammar, but for some reason I just, uh, I don't know, my eyes today. I, I am very uh, exhausted today. It's been a long weekend. Uh, so anyway, most of your work will be done using tools. To use those tools, they need to be on your computer, and you will be able to use them in the terminal. Some commands require parameters in order to work correctly. Here's an example. Usage, AirPlay, BSSID. You will write the command name followed by the parameter without the brackets, result, Air, AirPlay, and then we have a MAC address. Uh, and that's yes. Use the arrow dump tool. Um, so 
this is what we would use to search for nearby wireless networks and we indeed we see that there are two they're using web uh hey it's me your wi-fi and you pay now we saw both of those also when we went to the network widget up here they are um launch an attack on a wi-fi network by using the airplay tool type airplay bssid where bssid is one of the Europe. so airplay and we want to use the um password protected one obviously um so 2d uh 2d b3 or c bb6 uh 2d 2d b3 or c bb06 are you going to tell me that it's case sensitive because shouldn't be it is wait for the airplay tool to capture the handshake file handshake files are used to crack wi-fi networks passwords so uh so what uh, airplay does in real life and what it seems to be doing in the game is so when a device needs to connect to a wireless network wireless networks are i don't want to say they're inherently insecure but by design they're more difficult to secure than other network devices because with wired networks you, you can you have a, a physical layer there as well you need to be able to access a port in order to get to it but with wireless networks that's not the case obviously the uh, access points are broadcasting the devices are broadcasting and um, in order by design essentially they're they're open to being uh, connected so what we're doing is we're, we're broadcasting a message out right now we're saying hey are there any networks nearby i'd like to connect and then it's uh it's going to ask us for you know authentication um when a device is connected to a wi-fi network it may occasionally need to re-auth um, or it may de-auth and so what we're doing is we're just sending these packets out and we're, we're just saying okay uh, we want to we want to make this connection and we're intercepting that um, in order to get this uh, this key because the key is uh, what allows us to log on. So we have uh, a file now in our handshake folder. I assume we can access it over here. No. Uh, okay. Crack the handshake file by using the air crack tool. Do I have actual commands here? I I do. Oh, that is so nice. I don't have tab complete though. I can't change directory. Okay. Why not? Okay. All right. Well, uh, that's odd. It's weird that they would give me list, but not change directory. Can I? Hmm. Interesting. No. Okay. Well, uh, so what we're going to do now is we're going to use air crack and can I highlight and copy and paste so I can avoid. I can. Good. All right. So air crack. Um, so what we have is a hash file or sorry, not a hash file. What we have is a hash of the key. And so what we would do is we would use air crack um, and then a password file uh, to basically run a hash, the same hashing algorithm that's used to derive the key that we're trying to, to crack uh, against every password in our password file. And when a hash file from our password file matches the one that we got from um, AirPlay, then we have we, we can infer that the plain text is whatever the password that was hashed was. And that's because hashing algorithms are deterministic. A small change in the input results in a dramatic change to the output, meaning that if hash values are the same, we can we, we don't ever see the actual password in plain text. But if we have matching, matching hash values and we know the input that was used to derive the hash that matches, then we have essentially derived the plain text. Now, we're not actually going to be inputting a... Uh, password file here apparently so uh, it is possible also to uh, <clears throat> to derive hash values also via our brute force method which is basically we we just throw input at an application running all of that input through hashing algorithms until we happen upon the same um, the same result it's uh, obviously a much slower process and with strong passwords it's not even worth attempting but 
most passwords are not strong. So uh, without a uh, without a, a password file being passed here, I have to assume that that's what we're doing here is we're, we're brute forcing this and just trying random data or fuzzing data um, and uh, getting those hash values until we find one that happens to match. And it would have to be a very weak password in order to do it. But um, so it is... It is not. It is. It is iterating through some password file because it's it's giving me a number of keys tested. I guess it could be the number of um, brute force attempts. Um, so yeah, look at that password: capital D, capital M, zero, lower S, lower I, capital A, lower P, lower S, capital Q, lower X. Um, that's a strong enough password. It would not have been brute forced that fast. But okay, but we have it. So let's. Oops. Okay, I don't know what that's about. But let me actually highlight it. Copy. Now we can connect to that Wi-Fi. I almost remember what it feels like to hack your first neighbor. Now that you're connected to a new Wi-Fi network, your traces are gone. Keep in mind that regularly switching Wi-Fi networks will be very important through your hacker journey. The longer you stay connected to a Wi-Fi network, the bigger the chances are for you to get arrested by the police. Note that the Wi-Fi network will kind of forget you when disconnecting from it. And there's no reason why that would be. I have a first contract in mind for you, so go buy yourself some tools on the Backstore website. Okay. Uh, buy the Endmap tool. See, this is another actual tool, Endmap. Um, but it's not... I mean... I guess it could be linked from something called the backstore, but I mean, map is just download. In this world, your super RGB computer will not be enough. My super RGB? That's why I bought you a server. Yeah, that's right. Your own server. Oh boy, thank you. I appreciate Each that. Each contract can be different, so you'll need to make some space on your computer before you do it. I'm also suspicious of it, by the way. I'm being now, a little bit sarcastic. Go transfer to your server the tools that you bought during our previous call. So this mysterious person wants me to move my tools for conducting illegal activity to a mysterious server that I don't control and I don't know where it's located and I assume they do. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> uh, open the server Zilla software. Okay. That's an analog, obviously, of FileZilla, an FTP client. Your computer storage space is limited. You can use ServerZilla at any time to transfer files to your personal server. Uh, this is dumb. Shouldn't do this. Um, I take it I'm supposed to transfer transfer your, to your server the following tools. Okay, so yeah. And I can't select more than one at a time. God, it's not even a good analog of FileZilla. Now that you're geared up, it's time to honor your first contract. I just sent you on Discord the IP address of the network that you are going to hack, followed by the name of the file that you need to steal for me. When Discord, you're done, huh? just send me the file on Discord. Discord, huh? All right, I take it this is Discord. All the communication is done through Discord. Uh, you can consult the requests of your customers and validate contracts in progress. So Discord is obviously an analog of Discord. It is a place where you know people talk a lot. I have seen a lot of uh, people lately under the apparent assumption that Discord is a secure way to chat. It's not, by the way. If you're one of those people that thinks that Discord is secure, you're you're wrong. Um, you're just plain wrong. Um, it's not even really possible to configure Discord in such a way that it becomes secure because just the way Discord is designed. Uh, all of your communications can be logged by third parties, and they definitely are being logged by third parties. The number of investigations I've had that began with Discord chats or people sharing contraband things over Discord um, over the last four years or so, it's like half of them. So if you think Discord is secure, stop thinking that and also stop using it. Because unless you're, unless you're, I mean, it's a good, I use it too for chatting and stuff. So if you're using it for legitimate reasons, by, by all means, continue to do so. But know that you're being monitored while you're on it. So um, if you're okay with that, then go ahead. 
In order to be able to infiltrate a network, you need to know its vulnerabilities. To do that, you will use the Nmap tool on the IP address of the network that you want to scan. So Nmap is a scanning tool, a network scanning tool. And I suppose after a fashion, it could be used to reveal vulnerabilities, but uh, usually it's more of a recon tool, and then you would use a vulnerability scanner or um, or something like that to, uh, to probe deeper. But I, I understand they're kind of combining features here, it seems. Okay. Um, all right, so uh, the network is at. I'm actually going to use the notepad feature here. Whoop. Control C, Control V. Looking for a file, first contract. Okay. Uh, so we need a terminal and and map. Wow. That was unfortunate. 202-414-4928. So when you run an Nmap scan, um, unless you configure it not to, you pass a parameter to not do this, um, it will send a ping out to every IP in whatever range you provided, in this case to the one IP. If it gets a ping back, then it will run various network scans according to whatever parameters you pass to it. Um, in this case, it was just a raw scan. So, uh, What we get back here, we can see that uh, port 80 is open, so it's a web server. It's got... Uh, it says version 134. It doesn't say what service is actually running. Well, I mean, it says HTTP, but I mean, you know. Um, so yeah, it's a web server. So... We should be able to just... I can't... Can I not actually enter in a... What? That's lame. Mm. Well, anyway, it provides a bookmark for us, but that's... I should be able to just type it in. You That doesn't make any sense why it wouldn't allow me to do that. Whatever. When a network exposes a service to the internet, it also exposes its vulnerabilities. Okay, so I mean, yeah, Nmap when when you're when you run a scan for open ports, yeah, it, it can show that there's a port open that may be running a vulnerable service. That's absolutely true. Um, in this case, it just says that port 80 is open. It doesn't tell us that there's a vulnerability. I mean, it's potentially a vulnerability depending on what service is running, and I guess depending also on the nature of the web application on the other side. Um, anyway, when a network exposes a service to the internet, it also exposes vulnerabilities. Exploits are developed in order to take advantage of these vulnerabilities, along various advantages, such as remote access, for example. To exploit a vulnerability, you need to know its, you need to know the service uh, and the version of the targeted service in order to download the corresponding exploit and then enter its name in a terminal. Okay. Um, oh, okay. So the kitties DB is supposed to be where we get these exploits. I see. Uh, well, what we would actually use is, um, what this is an analog of is, is Metasploit. Um, but it's sort of an analog. It's after a fashion an analog. Um, so yeah, what we would do is when we know that there's a service out there that we suspect there to be a, an available exploit, we'll use something like Metasploit and a Metasploit module in order to, to automate the exploit. It's by no means necessary uh, because all it does is automates things. So, it, I mean, most zero days aren't going to have I'm not most. No zero days are going to have a Metasploit module available for them. So it's more of a shortcut um, that is the result of security research than part of security research itself. So, um, But it's not, I mean, you know, well, there's an available exploit, so we would take advantage of it. HTTP overflow 134. You can check the inventory of your computer by using the command ls. Okay. Enter ls to list the folders. ls followed by the folder name to list its contents. Uh, so if oh so I can do tab complete it's just that you can't CD okay um, all right there's the exploit um, and Metasploit is a command line tool it's a it's a it's an exploit suite but uh, you you wouldn't go to a website to download exploit modules or anything well no that's not entirely true because if it's not one that you you you, you normally fetch them through uh, metasploit but okay i digress uh infiltrate the target network by using the exploit you just brought up type exploit name ip address so no get a phone call hold on a moment
Okay, we're back. All right, so. Uh, there it is. Uh, so exploit name was HTTP overflow. IP address is 202.141.4928. Uh, reverse TCP handler, yes. Okay, so this is this is driving so far, generating payload. Uh, once an exploit is used on a vulnerable service, you will be directly connected to the machine that hosts the service. Uh, to search the context of the machine, you use the ls command. It would be nice. I mean, so this is true. Uh, we have a interpreter shell here. Um, yeah, this is this is realistic so far. Um, but uh, what I uh, using ls restricting me to ls is weird. Um, you know, normally I would run who am I to see under what user context is the service running, but I don't can't do that. So. Um, find the first contract file by scanning each folder using the ls command. Yeah, see, and that's weird too. Why wouldn't I just cd? Uh, color and reduce. Play. There's the first contract. Download the first contract file by using the get command. So, uh, get yours. Having trouble typing around my microphone. All right. So uh, I'm actually running a get command on the remote server right now. So this shouldn't do anything, but I get what they're going for. When you download a file, it is created on your computer and renamed to network IP address file type. Okay. In the current tutorial, the file is not renamed and remains first contract. Well, they probably should have renamed it then. If you're going to give me a tutorial that says to look out for that, then why would you do it differently? Um, but okay, fair enough. Um, so... Oh, right, I can't see. Okay, there it is, first contract. Disconnecting the computer by using the disconnect command. Completing your first contract will disconnect you from the network automatically. And we're having some issues here with... Send the file to override by clicking... Oh, yeah, sorry, I gotta go back to Zscord. Let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of that. First contract. Congrats. You just hacked your first network. How does it feel? Pretty good. I'm now feeling pretty good. talking about real things, not some movie or video game fancy shit, but don't get me wrong. The network that you just hacked wasn't even secured. Okay. I almost forgot. I sent you a package down the street. Go pick it up and keep it in your apartment for me. And don't ask him. Why am I doing these things for you? Who are you? I'm not picking up mysterious packages. What the hell, man? All your deliveries will be made in the alley. You can travel at any time by walking to the front door of your apartment. Okay. So I can F to leave computer. And I can tritty trot on over here. No. There we go. I travel. I'm in the alley. I... Don't see a package. Oh, there it is. Pick up the package. Oh, can I... Unlocked with Rescator Group. Alright, there's apparently things to unlock. Auto repair. And so I can't get mail either, apparently. Not yet, anyway. Where this Rescator Group is. Alright, well, I guess I'll go back. And... Can I... What do I do with the package? Locked. All right. You are now ready to go on your own. I talked to a few people. They will send you a message soon to give you some work. Good luck, hacker man. <laughs> Good luck, hacker man. <laughs> uh, there's lots to remember, but don't worry. You can refer to the help section of the pause menu to view pop-ups like this one again. You can also find a list of commands by typing the help command in terminal. Okay. 
During your investigations, you will discover several types of text files. Their contents can be displayed using the cat command. Okay, that's a real command. And, uh, and here are the different types of contents. Address, phone number, social security number. Okay. So what, what, why? Okay, I got, uh, complete your first two contracts. Hint to use the cat command to display files, content, cat, payment, ear, txt. Open the files pop up in the help section from the pause menu to see again what the different files are. Files are renamed to IP address type, txt after downloading, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Well, I have a couple of contracts here, but I think uh, that I will save them for next time. I'm almost certainly going to do a part two of this because this has been one of the most faithful-ish um, hacking simulators so far, and this is literally called Hacker Simulator. Can you believe it? Um, so, I think it's uh, I think it's worth playing a little while, and it's been a while since I've done a, a game series with a part two, so. Yeah, we're going to see more on this one. Um, I'm feeling like a real-life hacker already, so I guess tune in for the next one.